so good good evening everyone uh, today we will start with the remaining uh, naming reaction of uh, heterocyclic chemistry uh, four to five renaming reactions will be uh, remaining will rem uh, is remaining and then we'll start with the tablet chapter from the industrial pharmacy portion okay so uh, the first reaction naming reaction for uh, today's class is the uh, for the isoquinoline in previous class, if you remember, we have studied two uh, naming name reaction for the synthesis of isoquinoline, right? Uh, which one was that? For the isoquinoline, which two naming reaction we have studied? See, it's very important, right? Each and every reactions are very important. Type your answer in chat box. Which two naming reaction for isoquinoline we have studied in previous class? Pomeranz reaction. Yes, Vivek. Pomeranz and one more. One more was there. Pomeranz and one. One another reaction. Which reaction that was? It's a pictate, right? And what happens in case of uh, Pomeranz reaction and pictate? Fast guys, answer, answer. Give me answer. It's your revision. Okay, that one that one was pictate synthesis. What happens in case of Pomeranz? We in case of Pomeranz, we uh, use the two. Uh, you can say uh, two ethox uh, oh, methoxy groups are attached with the amine, right? So two two di uh, ethoxy uh, or you can say methoxy uh, two two di ethoxy uh, uh, ethylamine, right? Which is reacted with the, which is reacted with the aniline, sorry, phenylethylamine, and then it will forms the isoquinoline. So, and the pictate in pictate we are using the acetyl chloride, right? Where we use acetyl chloride in case of pictate uh, synthesis. Okay, so bisler niper lensky reaction is very similar to. The pictate synthesis. In case of bisler niper lensky synthesis of isoquinoline, what we use is starting material is phenylethylamine. Okay. And that phenylethylamine will react with the formyl chloride. Okay. And then, please kindly uh, mute your mic. Please kindly mute your mic. So, uh, phenyl to uh, phenyl ethylamine will react with the formal chloride in presence of P two O five and the palladium. So, this one is first step. This one is second one, and this one is third one. Okay, and then it will gives you final product, isoquinoline. I'm not going in detail into the mechanism because it is not important at this level for you. Okay, so what is important is the starting material and which uh, and the name of the reaction and for which heterocycle it is, it is very important for you. Okay, so now we'll move to the move towards the next reaction. So now uh, we will study the uh, synthesis reaction for the indol. What is the structure of indol? What is the structure of indol? Hmm? 
which heterocycle uh, can in indole contain which heterocycle because indole is a fusion of uh, aromatic and hetero aromatic fusion of pyrrole and benzene very good vivek very good yes so it's a fusion of pyrrole and benzene okay and that's why it is also known as benzopyrrole okay it is sometimes also known as benzo pyrrole okay just a minute So it is known as benzo right, this is happening. So it's uh, uh, remember the name. Uh, it's a benzo pyrrole, right? My mouse is somewhat lagging. Okay, so it's a benzopyrrole. So it's a benzopyrrole, right? Now what happens in case of synthesis of Fischer synthesis of indole? The first naming reaction for synthesis of indole is a Fischer reaction, right? So the first compound which is phenyl hydrazine. If NH2, NH2 is there, what will be the name of NH2, NH2? Two NH2 groups are attached with each other. What is the name of that group? What is the name of that group? Hydrazine. Yes, very good. Right? So it's a hydrazine. So now I have attached one phenyl ring with that. So its a na name is now phenyl hydrazine. And this phenyl hydrazine react with the ketone in presence of acid and it will give you a final product. You have to remember the product, final product, which is substituted indole, right? So simply what you have to remember is that phenyl hydrazine react with the ketone in presence of acid and it will give me a indole ring, right? And in which amino acid indole ring is present? In which amino acid indole ring is present? In which amino acid? Tryptophan. Very good, Manisha. Very good. Very good. Very good. Then we have some more uh, reactions for the pyro uh, indole. I think this is not included in slide, but remember the names I, I am returning. I am writing here, right? First one is a Fischer in uh, Fischer indole synthesis. Then there is a one more which is Madlung synthesis. Medlung synthesis and uh, another one is Bissler synthesis. So, in case of Medlung synthesis, what happens that the uh, benzyl or you can say uh, two uh, bromo benzyl or you can say one bromo benzyl uh, bromide okay a structure like this it 
it's a sorry uh, it's a one bromo acetophenone right one bromo acetophenone if you uh, remo remove this bromine and uh, uh, replace it uh, put here hydrogen so it will be acetophenone right but i have substituted that hydrogen with the bromine so it will be one bromo acetophenone right and this one bromo acetophenone will react with the aniline and it will gives you a indol right so that reaction is known as bisler synthesis and in case of madlung synthesis we use four chloroaniline sorry four chloro we use four chloroaniline okay and we will react that aniline with the ketone and it will gives you indol right so remember this two naming reaction one is medlang and another one is bisler one of the major reaction for the synthesis of fish uh, indol is a fisher reaction okay but these two are also important uh, question on the uh, fisher synthesis was uh, there in uh, niper uh, 2023 okay question on the fisher synthesis was there in niper 2023 Okay. Now, the next reaction is for the synthesis of Cook Helbun synthesis in it is uh, for the synthesis of thiazole ring, right? This reaction, uh, this ring, this one, this one is also thiazole, and this one is also thiazole, right? Just uh, you can say tautomerism. What is tautomerism? What is tautomerism, guys? Just tautomerism has take, taken place and it is converted into uh, the actual uh, form, right? What is tautomerism? What is tautomerism? What is tautomerism? Type your answer in chat box. Shifting of hydrogen between two atoms. Yes, very good Vivek, very good, yes. So, these are very basic concepts, so remember it, right? right? It is very important. Question can come from any basic concepts. Okay. So each and every concepts in between, even if it is not present in slide, and I'm telling you, please remember it or note it down. Okay. So two amino propane nitrile will react with the carbon disulfide in presence of H plus where, where, where uh, any in any reaction, if H plus is written, as I have told that it is means that it's uh, in the presence of acid, strong acid, right? And it will gives you a substituted thiazole ring, right? Okay, it gives you me a substituted thiazole ring. This is the one more uh, naming reaction for the synthesis of thiazole, uh, which is hand synthesis. Remember, hand synthesis is also for the uh, uh, pyrrol also, right? So remember that it is very different from that hand synth uh, that hand synthesis. Okay. So see the options also that whether they are asking for the pyrrole or a thi uh, thiazole, right? This ring is thiazole, right? One and three position is uh, uh, first position is uh, sulfur 
and third position is nitrogen okay and that ring is known as thiazole ring okay so in case of n synthesis of uh, uh, thiazole 2 chloro 1 phenyl propane 1 all okay it's a kind of alpha chloroketone if you observe it properly the alpha chloroketone is reacting with the methane thioamide okay methane thioamide okay or that also can be here if the totomerism simply if you see this uh, this this structure uh, as here oh is present right so simply this form uh, this alpha chloroketone is converted into the, its enol form via the totomerism reaction okay now what happens that it will react in presence of uh, it this both will react and hcl will be removed here in sh group the hydrogen is present and here the chlorine is present right so it will remove uh, hcl as well as water and it will give me a thiazole so simply you have to remember alpha chloroketone or its tautomeric form reacting with the methane thiamide okay and removal of h2 and hcl take place and it will give me a five uh, you can say thiazole substituted thiazole ring okay Now, this one is for the uh, imidazole synthesis naming reaction for the synth uh, synthesis of the imidazole. In case of imidazole, what happens that this, what is the name of the first compound? It is benzyl, right? This one is benzyl. Okay. So, this benzyl, its common name is benzyl, right? What will be the uh, one more name if I want to give the name to this benzyl? kind of a IUPAC name type your answer in chat box this benzyl will react with the ammonia and also uh, in uh, ammonia and benzaldehyde and uh, by removal of three water molecule it will gives you a imidazole ring right substituted imidazole ring so you can see that this two ammonia nitrogens are present here at this position and this position for first and third position right and these two phenyls are present here so you can say that this part of this part of the carbons are present here this part okay this part is of the benzyl okay and this part is from the benzaldehyde okay so this is how also you can remember the reaction okay this part is from the benzaldehyde and this part is from the sorry this part is from the benzyl and this part is from the benzaldehyde and these two nitrogens are of the ammonia okay one two diphenyl aceto acetic acid uh no 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 it's not that it's a benzophenone right the another name is benzophenone also known as benzene. Okay, also known as benzene. If acetophenone was there, it will be CH3. Right? So, it's a benzophenone. Or benzene 1,2-dion, you can say. Okay? Now, The next synthesis reaction for the imidazole is Dabus method. So, what happens in case of Dabus? The first compound, if you remember, it's a glyoxal, right? Two CHO groups are attached with each other. That is glyoxal. And it is very similar if you observe in case of red cis Zewiski, here two phenyls are present, right? In case of red cis Zewiski reaction, two phenyls was there, right? But in case of Debus method, we are using glyoxyl. So that two phenyls are replaced with the hydrogen. And here also in place of benzaldehyde, we are using a formaldehyde, right? In place of benzaldehyde, we are using formaldehyde. Okay, and it will give me a imidazole reaction. Sorry, imidazole uh, uh, ring. Okay, so... These two nitrogens are from the 
ammonia, two molecules of ammonia. This part is from the glyoxal. And this one is formaldehyde, right? Okay. So, any question till guys? Any question? What is the difference is only is the phenyl group, right? In case of Red cis Zewiski, we have used phenyl substituted. Here also we have phenyl, uh, phenyl containing aldehyde, that is benzaldehyde. Okay. So that is the only difference. Now, the last uh, naming reaction, uh, and then we'll start with the tablet chapter. That is the uh, synthesis for the oxazole. Okay, and for the oxazole, Robinson Gabriel synthesis is uh, used. Uh, okay, so in case of oxazole, it is presence of nitrogen on uh, third position and on a first position, oxygen will be there and it's, it is five-membered ring, right? So what happens in case of oxazole synthesis that and 2-oxo-2-phenyl-acetamide, ethyl-acetamide and 2-oxo-2-phenyl-ethyl-acetamide, okay, in presence of acid, it is getting rearranged, okay, or rearrangement take place in this compound in presence of acid, okay, and removal of water will be take place and it will directly converted into the oxazole ring, okay. So, if you remember, in case of pyrrole synthesis for the, uh, you can say, pyrrole synthesis of the palnor synthesis of pyrrole, right? Palnor synthesis of pyrrole, uh, what is present here is the CH2. And that compound we have told as a diketonic compound, 1,4-diketone compound, right? This portion we have named as 1,4-diketonic compound, okay? But here the nitrogen is present. So, its IUPAC name is accordingly. So, this is very similar compound to the uh, your 1,4-diketone, uh, right? Just it's the CH2 group in that 1,4-diketone uh, is re replaced with the NH group here, okay? And that then this compound will undergo rearrangement in presence of acid via removal of uh, water and it will gives you a oxazole ring. Okay, so starting material, again I am repeating, starting material and the name of reaction and for which heterocycle it is, it is very important. And also for the general organic chemistry naming reactions. Okay, so this is all about the uh, naming reaction and heterocyclic compound. Okay, if you have any question, you can ask in chat box. Any question regarding this reactions? This reaction was Robinson Gabriel synthesis for the oxazole ring. Okay. Every possible naming reaction from heterocycle and general organic chemistry I have covered. We have also uh, solved many MCQs and in previous uh, class, I have also uh, simultaneously have told you, uh, told you guys about the MCQs that which heterocyclic uh, naming reaction was asked in which year. So, that is very important. So, remember that. Now, uh, this is one MCQ which I was talking about, right? That uh, in case of uh, synthesis of uh, quinoline, squarp synthesis is used, right? So, here they have asked, that which reacts, uh, reagent used in the squab synthesis of quinoline? And this question is from the GPAT 2021. Okay. What will be the answer of this uh, question? Type your answer in chat box. Type your answer in chat box.
टाइप योर आंसर इन चैट बॉक्स गाइस फास्ट फोर बेंजाल्डिहाइड एनिलीन सल्फ्यूरिक एसिड एंड नाइट्रोबेंजिन नो बेंजाल्डिहाइड नो what will be used option 3 yes we k very good yes option 3 is correct right if you remember we have talked that that glycerol will be converted into acrolein in presence of this sulfuric acid okay in presence of this sulfuric acid the glycerol will be converted into the acrolein okay and then it will react with the aniline okay and this nitrobenzene is used as a reagent okay actually they have asked reagents but actual you can say or a catalyst okay okay as a supporting material this nitrobenzene will be there but for the synthesis of quinoline we required this sulfuric acid aniline and glycerol this glycerol will be converted into this compound i have also asked you the common name of this compound was that what was that it is acrolein right ch2 double bond ch cho that is acrolein prop 2 enol right that is acrolein which is formed from the glycerol due to the presence of this sulfuric acid and that then this acrolein will react with aniline and it will gives you a quinoline ring right so it is very important so this kind of question can come okay as i have told you in previous lecture also this kind of question can be asked this is what the mcq which i have also covered in a uh, uh, previous class right it was not on the in the form of question but i have give uh, give give you guys a one structure this that is this one containing oxygen four member ring containing oxygen and we have also covered the iupac naming so this kind of question can be asked so the answer was the oxytane yes sneha very good yes it's a oxytane right so how to give name name to this compounds i have already covered it in the previous class okay so now we will move towards the tablet chapter so what do you uh, mean by uh, tablets what is the basic definition of tablets we'll cover important part of the chap tablet chapter which are most imp from the portion where the question comes right solid unit dosage form okay yes yes what are the different three methods for the manufacturing of the tablets what are the different three methods for the manufacturing of tablets direct compression yes then wet and dry granulation very good yes very good very good yes yes and in case of dry granulation uh, which uh, instrument we will use in case of dry granulation this question has been asked this question has been asked roller compactor yes what is the full name full name is chilsonator roller compactor okay roller compactor right but it's a chilsonator roller compactor okay now you know guys very basics about the tablet so we will move 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 towards the most uh, important portions of the tablet chapter right from the uh, from which part the questions come 
in the into the zip pattern. We will solve at the end of this lecture. We will solve lots of MCQ uh, on the tablet chapter uh, on the tablets. So you will get lots of idea that what kind of MCQs has been asked in the previous year GPAT question paper. Okay. And from this chapter, almost three to four questions are every year. It is confirmed that three to four questions will come from this chapter only. So almost 16 marks. Okay. Mostly four questions come from this chapter only. So it's a 16 marks for you. Okay. So uh, give your full attention. So first we'll start with the different types of tablet okay so tablet which is ingested orally okay so tablet which is ingested orally the types are compressed tablet multi compressed tablet delay release tablet sugar coated tablet film coated tablet and chewable tablet here its examples are written these examples are very important okay this can be asked as an MCQ, right? Like direct compressed tablets are exam uh, very simple example is the paracetamol tablet. Okay. Then delayed release tablet example is enteric coated uh, bisacodyl tablet or any enteric coated tablet, right? Okay. Any enteric coated tablet. What are the different uh, examples of enteric coating polymer? Can you name it? Different types or different uh, names of the enteric coating polymer. Then Type your answer in chat box, then sugar coated tablet. Okay. The example is yes, cellulose acetate phthalate. What are the other examples? CMC is not a uh, enteric coating polymer. Balaji uh, Gouda. Okay. CMC is not a uh, enteric coating polymer. Then sugar coated tablet, multivitamin tablet, film coated tablet is example uh, is metronidazole tablet. Chewable tablet example is antiacid because most of the uh, antiacid tablets come say in the form of uh, chewable tablets. Okay. Now, what is the importance of each? The multi compressed tablets are prepared to uh, separate the chemically incompatible, uh, you can say, drugs, right? Chemically or physically incompatible drugs to give them in a single. Uh, single tablet we prepare a multi compressed tablet the api is which are physically or chemically incompatible for them we prepare the multi compressed tablet so this can be asked as a mcq why we prepare multi compressed tablet what is the motto behind it right so and different types if you have read the latchman book there are different types also also the tablet within a tablet within a tablet or tablet within a tablet it means that the outer layer is of the different api the inner core is of the different API. Okay. And it also can be for the same API. That outer core is of the uh, API. And then again, uh, there is a, another core of the API is present. Okay. Or another layer of the API is present. Okay. So that is also an example of multi-compressed tablet. Okay. Then delay release tablet, as you know, entry coated tablet are covered under the delayed release tablet. Okay. And what are the other uh, exam? Uh, you can say control drug delivery uh, example that we can cover in, in uh, here is control release tablet and sustained release tablet. Can you give me a, a definition in simple words? What is control release tablet and what is uh, sustained release uh, a tablet or sustained control and what is uh, what is control release and what is sustained release? What is the difference behind the, uh, between these two? Okay. And also in case of delayed release tablet, you can take an example of a uh, tablets for the, uh, the uh, you can say drugs for the uh, treatment of the rheumatoid arthritis, right? Where the patients uh, having a problem of morning stiffness. So that tablets are given at a night, right? To, uh, you can say, as it's given to, uh, given give during the night, uh, at night before, uh, before bedtime, and then because why because it's uh, the stiffness uh, will uh, uh, stiffness issue will be more in the morning where uh, at that time patient in uh, in bed right so that's why uh, they gives the tablet in night and that after when it, when it uh, the time come uh, the morning stiffness comes it will resolve the issue right control it is releasing the drug according to predetermined uh, predictable time in control release, rate is predetermined. Yes, rate is predetermined. Very good, Deepika. Very good. And what is sustained release? Okay. 
what is sustain release type your answer and then sugar coated tablet okay so sugar coated tablet most of the multivitamin tablets are sugar coated tablet okay and then film coated tablet film coating is done for the mostly for the taste masking okay taste masking and also to prevent uh, you can say uh, protect your tablet from the temperature and the moisture for that reason we do the uh, film coating drug release rate not predetermined that is sustained release yes what will be the order for the control release uh, what will be the order first order zero order and what will be for the sustained release first order or zero order first order for uh, which and the chewable tablet okay and in case of chewable tablet which diluent is used in case of chewable tablet we will study this chapter as an entire mcq uh, type uh, okay mannitol yes mannitol yes yes and why mannitol is used what is the reason behind it why mannitol is used in chewable tablet okay type your answer in chat box so chewable tablet mannitol is used you are right what is the reason you have to type in chat box then tablet used for oral cavity these are for the ingested orally and this is for oral cavity it means that it will remain inside the mouth okay inside the mouth cavity inside the oral cavity so the first example is buccal tablet that is vitamin c tablet they are buccal tablet then sublingual tablet the best example for sublingual tablet is nitroglycerin tablet also what is the use of nitroglycerin what is the use of nitroglycerin angina pectoris yes and why it is given sublingually because in case of sublingual tablet it will give faster onset of action right because it directly enters into the blood so it's avoid the syst uh, pre systemic metabolism yes faster action very good chintu so it will gives a faster action or fa quick onset of action we can say the proper word is quick onset of action okay and uh, because in, in case of angina we require quick onset of action to uh, re uh, relieve the pa patient from the anginal pain right and as that uh, that uh, uh, sublingual tablets directly absorb into the uh, into the blood from the sub, uh, buccal mucosa from the sublingual mucosa okay and it will absorb in directly into the blood so it will not undergo the first pass metabolism as we are not taking it orally uh, or we can say it is not uh, entering into our gi tract right it is directly get absorbed so that's why it will gives a faster onset of action and that's why nitroglycerin is showing high first pass metabolism okay what is first part first pass metabolism what is first pass metabolism why mannitol is used in chewable tablets the reason behind it is that uh, it will gives you a negative heat of solution okay it will gives you negative heat of solution and because of negative heat of solution it will uh, kind of you uh, it will uh, give a pleasant effect okay or it gives a pleasant taste in your mouth okay and that's why it is used in che uh, chewable tablet because it gives a pleasant taste the reason behind pleasant taste is a negative heat of solution okay so we'll now move uh, towards the next part and the one more is the trouches and uh, lozenges and dental cones dental cones are of the antibiotics when someone has removed that teeth so doctor will the dentist will put the one cone of an antibiotic to prevent the uh, you can say to prevent the microbial growth there okay metabolized by liver yes when you take oral it is metabolized by liver that is first pass metabolism before entering into the systemic circulation first it will goes into the liver and metabolized by liver that is first pass metabolism okay let's come back here in case of dental cone it will use for mostly for the antibiotics okay and trochis and lozenges one more important thing that lozenges never disintegrate into your mouth okay they were slowly dissolved remember this very important they are never get disintegrate lozenges will slowly dissolve in your mouth okay they also not enter into your gi tract they will remain in the mouth as the uh, buccal tablet and sublingual tab tablets okay and that's why we'll tell, tell it as a ingested in the oral cavity
then different other different type of uh, tablets are tablet administered by other root like implantation tablet like the uh, sex hormone uh, sex hormone tab uh, tablets uh, sex hormone implants right like estrogen for the progesterone that implants are also a type of tablet okay which are ingested into the tissue cavities okay to give a longer release okay to give a longer release or a release for the longer period of time okay and this suppository or insert that are also called under the type of tablet okay clotrimazole tablet okay this clotrimazole tube is also available and tablet are also coming uh, specifically for the fungal infection in the vagina okay for the fungal infection this is a drug of choice vaginal fungal infection this drug is drug of choice okay vaginal fungal infection this is the drug of choice that is clotrimazole or uh, tube is also used and suppository type tablets are also used okay then the other types are the tablet used to prepare solution it means that we have to use it with a water okay right for example it's uh, the best example is Disprin tablet as you all know that is that tablets are effervescent tablet and this effervescent tablet contain which ingredient which ingredient will be there in effervescent tablet type your answer in chat box this is very important because there was an MCQ uh, has been asked in previous year GPAD question paper citric acid tartaric acid yes and one more component one more yes sodium bicarbonate very good so tartaric acid citric acid and sodium bicarbonate okay yes very good very good yes then dispensing tablet okay so dispensing tablet example is digiplex okay it's an enzyme and dispensing tablet now this is a very old concept this is not currently in use okay but it is in the uh, reference reference books so that's uh, that's why we uh, I have included here then hypodermic tablet and tablet triturate okay tablet triturate means simply a powder is uh, and this is also an old concept this both all three are old concepts but as it is a part of reference book that I have, that's why I will include uh, in case of hypodermic tablet what happens that in case of hypodermic tablet uh, before uh, it's it's kind of a tablet which is dissolved into the water water for injection and then it will give a given in the form of a injection okay and so that is hypodermic tablet okay and then that is a the, the another type is a tablet triturate which is a simple mixture of uh, simply it's a triturated powder and your api and then it is simply compressed and it will, uh, and it will uh, given in uh, given to the patient so this all are the uh, you can say old concepts right currently these are not in use that is tablet triturate, hypodermic tablet and dispensing tablet. This will not mostly uh, used. Okay. Now different additives of tablet that which kind of a, a excipients present in the tablet right so that we will cover now so the first one is diluent the second one is binder or a adhesive third one is disintegrant fourth one is lubricant or a glidant I think it's different lubricant and glidants are somewhat different than coloring agent flavoring agent and sweetening agent okay so in case of diluent the most commonly used diluent is starch and mcc okay starch and mcc are the most commonly used diluent okay 
and why we add the diluent what will be the maximum size of the tablet maximum size of the tablet in inches can you name give me name it is written in latchman book also are you able to recall that what will be the maximum size of the tablet in inches it is written in the uh, lackman book okay you guys have to uh, find it and uh, you have to, to tell me in the next class which will be tomorrow you have to find and you have to tell me right so you also uh, try to you can say adhere yourself to the reference books because the questions are from the reference book if you take any uh, any year gpet question paper the question mostly are from the reference book they are not doing any even simple change if, if, uh, sometimes they just uh, play with the words to uh, trick you otherwise the every concept and everything every sentence they have taken in a form of a question are from the ref reference book itself okay so you have to find this and you have to tell me in like lackman book in which chapter this uh, this uh, thing is present okay and you have to give all, give me answer that what is the minimum and maximum size of the tablet in inches okay in inches i am not asking in terms of grams okay now the second component is binder what is the uh, role of the binder so it's a simply the name is uh, itself suggesting that it binds the particles of the api and the other components right other components diluent coloring agent lubricant flavoring agent disintegrant so this binder will uh, you can say the uh, adhere everything with each other okay it will uh, uh, you can say form a bonds uh, with each of the component between each of the components so it will form a particle or a kind of a granule like structure when we talk about the wet granulation right we will discuss this uh, all individually so you will get more idea so the first one uh, as we have discussed diluent okay you not need to remember this uh, all criteria what is the important is the they are also known as filler and why we use diluent sometimes as we know that the volume of the uh, or you can say the amount of api the actual api is very less like for example, in case of chlorpheniramine maleate, the actual requirement or uh, dose of the uh, drug is 4 mg. But if you see the tablet weight is 100 mg. So other 96 mg is your excipient. Okay, and that is diluent. The majority part of this remaining 96 mg will be diluent. So for the uh, providing the bulk to the bulk to the uh, tablet okay where the dose is dose of the api is very less for that reason we use diluent okay see as here here it is also written right to make a required bulk okay when tablet dosage form itself inadequate inadequate means that as i have told that the dose is very less okay So these are the examples of commonly used diluent in the very important, uh, you can say examples, okay, very important. So these are the common examples used in the uh, case of diluent. The first one is a lactose anhydrous and spray dried lactose, okay. What will the problem with the lactose? If I use a hydrate, hydrated form of the lactose, what will be the problem? What will be the problem? Maillard reaction. Very good. Yes. Which kind of drug it will give? Maillard reaction. Which kind of drugs? Amine. Yes. Very good. Very good. Whether it will be primary, secondary or tertiary amine or all of them? Primary. Yes. Very good. Very good. Yes. Okay. Then for the directly compressed tablet, star X. Now remember, the starch is not directly compressible. Okay, this also can be asked as an MCQ. Starch is not directly compressible, but the star X 1500, which is modified starch, is directly compressible. Okay, modified starch is directly compressible. Remember this. 
it is very important okay so remember every every written uh, you can say the uh, uh, name of the diluent and also their brand names like hydrogel starch is also known as imdex and salutab okay the lactose is available as a brand name of spherolic why i am telling this because in uh, pre some uh, year uh, in a uh, previous year question papers in some uh, during some years they are also used to ask the brand names of the uh, excipients okay or uh, brand names of the diluent uh, then your binder disintegrant so, so remember this okay then microcrystalline cellulose that is the most uh, common name is the avicel and what are the other other available names what are the other brand names of the mcc can you tell me guys it is also given in the lackman book what are the other names Viva cell, very good Vivek. Yes, Viva cell and Imco cell. Remember this, okay? I'm telling you again, remember this. They are used to ask the brand names also. Okay? The listed here, you have to remember only of the listed here. The, the excipients which are listed here, okay? Uh, diluents. Then dibasing calcium uh, phosphate dehydrate, okay? Then calcium sulfate. The name is the trichaphose for the tri basic. If it is tri basic, the brand name was trichaphose. Okay, as it is tri basic calcium phosphate is also used and di basic is also used. The brand name of tri basic is trichaphose. Okay, then calcium sulfate. What is the brand name of calcium sulfate? What is the brand name? What is the brand name of calcium sulfate? What is the brand name? What is the brand name of calcium sulfate? Diteb. No, 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 no. No, diteb. It's a compactrol, right? Remember this also. Compactrol. It's a compactrol. That's why I am telling you guys, uh, read reference books also. Good reference book for the industrial pharmacy. You can go up with Remington, Lackman book also. And uh, also there is one more book, uh, which is Ansel, right? These three books are very good for the all of the important chapter of industrial pharmacy. Tablet, aerosol, then your parenteral capsule, okay? Then Manitol. What is the brand name of Manitol? It is Purely Tall. Okay. Purely Tall. Okay. Then Sorbitol and Sucrose. Sucrose is available as a, as a brand name of Deepak and Nutab. Okay. So, and if the 97% pure Sucrose and if the 3% invert sugar is present, Okay, I have written it as IS, that is invert sugar. If 3% invert sugar and 97% sucrose is there, okay, then it is known as DPAC. Okay, then NU tab, in case of NU tab, uh, this is also written in the Lackman, the percentage of the sucrose and the amount of the, uh, you can say, uh, invert, uh, inverted sugar present. Okay. So, in case of new tab, it is 95%. Okay. And one more is the sugar tab. Which is around, I think, 93%. Uh, okay. Just uh, clear it. Uh, just cross-check it in the Lackman also. Okay. New tab is 95 and sugar tab is, I think, around 93%. But remember this, this is also important. This this wall slide is uh, a, a filled with the number of MCQs, okay? The brand names and also the commonly used diluent, which are very important, right? Okay, mannitol in case of chewable tablet, okay? And then the most commonly is the lactose also and lactose and the MCC, okay? 
in case of normal tablets and in case of chewable tablets mannitol is the most widely used one okay but it is this one is also a most costlier diluent mannitol is also very costly okay mannitol is very costly and and the sorbitol is a optical isomer of mannitol okay so structurally mannitol and sorbitol are very similar they are differ in their optical rotation only right so mannitol is very costly and that's why sometimes sorbitol is mixed with the mannitol okay because pure mannitol is very costly okay so it's a costliest diluent okay most expensive diluent is mannitol okay then we'll move from uh, towards the disintegrant okay so uh, on on which mechanisms disintegrant uh, will work how disintegrant uh, work can you tell me which mechanism it will follow again i am continuously repeating whatever i am asking and whatever whatever i am speaking will be a question for you okay not only the question which we are uh, so, uh, solving in the uh, in uh, at the end of the lecture but every uh, portion is uh, mcq for you swelling yes which are other one swelling and one more wicking right what is wicking wicking is due to the capillary action and what is capillary action so water will move upwards okay due to the adhesive forces what is adhesive forces and cohesive forces what are adhesive and cohesive forces one mechanism is right wk yes it is swelling and another mechanism is wicking swelling means that the polymer will be uh, act as a disintegrant right we are also using polymer as a disintegrant so that polymer will swell right more than its weight right and then it will burst the tablet okay tablet will burst and in case of uh, the another one is a wicking right in case of wicking it will show a capillary action capillary action means water will attracted inside the tablet okay due to the adhesive forces okay okay due to the adhesive forces yes different two particles and what are cohesive forces between the similar particles okay so that are known as cohesive forces okay now these are the examples of the disintegrants and also we add disintegrant intragranular and extragranular what is intragranular and extragranular can you tell tell me what is intragranular and extragranular in two step we will add disintegrant right this is also very important and what are the reason behind we are adding is it it uh, intragranular and extragranularly first tell me what is intragranular extragranular and why we will add add in in two steps why directly we will not add the diluent the first one is intragranular right and uh, then extra granular means that we, uh, during the granulation during the granulation is known as intra granular then where we prepare granules of that the, the mixture of powders right where it contain disintegrant binder your api diluent everything okay and at that during that time we add disintegrant into that that is intra granular and after forming granules we again add a disintegrant that is extra granular and because of the extra granular when tablet will disintegrate the tablet will disintegrate in the form of granules okay in the form of granules it will disintegrate and after this granule as we have added 
uh, you can say dilu uh, disintegrant during the intragranular means during the formation of granule also. So it will uh, disintegrate into the form of small particles. So this is the importance of the adding it intragranularly and extragranularly. Okay. In the form of small particles. And uh, uh, due to extragranular, it will disintegrate into the granules. Okay. This is also an important concept can be asked as a MCQ. Okay. Then the super disintegrants. So first, tell me the examples of super disintegrant. What are super disintegrant and what are the examples of super disintegrant? Very, very important concept. Very, very important. And the examples are also important. Acidisol. Okay, acidisol. Is it a acidisol is a super disintegrant? Is it acidol is a super disintegrant? Primogel Explotab, yes. Uh, what is the actual, uh, it is a brand name. Primogel and Explotab is a brand name, right? For which super disintegrant, the brand name is Primogel and Explotab? For which, which, XCP, uh, which uh, uh, modified starch? Yes, yes. One more word I want. One more word. Yes, sodium starch glycolate. Yes, very good. Yes, yes, sodium starch glycolate. This is the uh, sodium starch glycolate having a brand name, Explotab and Primogel, right? Magnesium uh, cal uh, aluminum silicate, beta, not calcium silicate. It's a magnesium aluminum silicate, which is Vigam. And that Vigam is not used as a super disintegrant. It is used as a disintegrant. Okay. Vigum, that is magnesium aluminum silicate. Magnesium aluminum silicate, which is Vigum. That Vigum is used as a disintegrant. Yes, bentonite is also used, but as a disintegrant, not super disintegrant. Okay. Not super disintegrant. Naturally occurring super disintegrant. Calcium silicate. I think it's a disintegrant. Okay. I think it's a disintegrant because the most important names which I will cover in the next slide that are the most important names of the disintegrant. Okay. But if it is present in other uh, other reference book, then it um, I might be wrong in that portion. But I think calcium silicate is used as a disintegrant. Okay. The example of super, super disintegrant I am covering in the next slide. So as you have told, uh, guys, you have told Primogel Explotab, uh, that is uh, uh, sodium starch glycolate. And there are other examples also. Any other examples if you are able to recall? We are able to recall any other examples? Cross povidon, yes. Cross carmelos, yes. Cross carmelos is for which uh, which ex uh, which 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 excipient? The brand name of which which super disintegrant? Cross carmelos. It's for the cross sodium CMC. Cross sodium CMC, not heavy cell, not heavy cell. MCC is used as a disintegrant, no doubt, but MCC is not a super disintegrant, okay? MCC is not a super disintegrant. Sometimes in some books also it is written, but it is not a super disintegrant. These are the super disintegrants. Yes, pre-gelatinized starch, you are right, cross carmelo sodium, that is cross-linked sodium CMC. Okay, it's a sodium CMC. Cross-link, cross-link sodium CMC, okay, cross-linked sodium CMC, then cross-povidone, that is cross-PVP, cross-polyvinyl pyrolidone, okay, because of the inter-cross-linking in the polymer, they that same polymer is act as a super disintegrant, okay, because this PVP is a binder, but the cross-PVP is a disintegrant, okay. And then the sodium starch glycolate, which is Explotab and Primogel. 
and there are other examples which are polacrylene potassium okay polacrylene potassium then low molecular weight hpc that is hydroxypropyl cellulose then sodium starch stearate that is known as sss okay sss that is known as sodium starch stearate low molecular weight hpc polacrylene potassium then your ssg which is sodium starch glycolate okay then cross caramelous sodium and cross link pvp these are the trusted one super disintegrant which are mentioned rightly in the reference book okay i am again repeating rightly in the reference book some are mentioned as a disintegrant in a third party material but they are not super disintegrant these are the super disintegrant example on which you can rely on okay that is sodium cmc cross link sodium cmc cross pvp polacrylene potassium sodium starch trh and sodium starch glycolate okay so it is very important remember this names because there are many a times many a times the question from the super disintegrant has been asked then the lubricant right so most commonly used lubricant is a magnesium stearate other which are used are stearic acid pg okay and surfactants but remember most widely used one is a magnesium stearate and which percent in which percentage uh, magnesium stearate is used in which percentage this is also can be asked as an mcq and we will see an mcq uh, on this uh, portion from the magnesium stearate it will it is in somewhat they have asked in a different way but the uh, the meaning of the uh, the reason they are asking behind it is the same which we are discussing here what is the percentage so it's used in a 0.2% okay generally 0.2% to 0.5% these are the general percentage in general okay the magnesium stearate is used in this percentage 0.2 to 0.5% okay then the coloring agent okay generally these are the coloring dyes which are used okay remember this all dyes name right that is fndc food and drug corporation okay yellow sunset which is it means that this dyes are recommended by the food and drug administration okay it is uh, you can say recommended by the food and drug administration can be used as a coloring agent in the uh, food as well as the drugs okay so these are the examples sunset yellow tetrazine very important then brilliant blue indigo indigo carmine then eosin y these are the examples so this can be asked as a mcq also examples which of the following are the example of coloring agent okay and they can be give you mcq tetrazine brilliant blue indigo carmine all of them or tetrazine or they have give you that two options are correct and then b and c both this kind of question can be asked okay so remember this and what is the uh, motto behind the coloring agent it is written here masking of color it very uh, a uh, common uh, kind of uh, a statements okay 
then the flavoring agent this is very important this question was in the gpat 2020 okay in gpat 2020 this question has been asked that uh, what is the uh, uh, you can say ratio of the sacker in uh, in this witness okay so it's a one gem 500 it is with respect to sucrose okay what is the this ratio will be for the aspartum what will be this ratio for the aspartum? I have written it here also. It is 200 times. Okay. And why this saccharin is now generally not used because of its carcinogenic effect. Okay. It will may cause a cancer on a long term use. And that's why saccharin is not generally used as a sweetener. Okay. And that's why mannitol is used in most of the cases or the sugar simple sugar is used to uh, taste masking or in the case of chewable tablets okay this is an artificial sweetener which is now not used because it's co it's a carcinogenic and its percentage or you can say the it's 500 times more sweet 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 sweeter than the uh, sucrose and the aspartum. Aspartum is 200 times, uh, you can say, sweet, uh, sweet than the sucrose and the mannitol. Mannitol is 17 times. In percentage, it is 17 times more sweet or sweeter than the sucrose, okay, in case of mannitol. Okay, so remember this, very important. Okay, so these three are very important. Now granulation. Some important problems also have are written here that uh, why we need granulation, right? Why we need a granulation of a powder? So, because of the poor flow property, okay, sometimes the, the API powder and excipient are having a very poor flow. And how we can determine the flow property? By which method we can determine flow property? By which method we can determine flow property? Angle of repose, yes. What are the different types of angle of repose? What are the different types? What are the different types of angle of repose? What are different methods to determine the angle of repose? One plate, yes. The main two methods are, which are the main two methods? Which are the two main methods? What are the two main methods? Tilted box and quant plate. Yes. Two types are the static and dynamic, right? Static and dynamic angle of repose. Now, if a if a API or your excipient, if the if it having a high angle of repose, then it will it will show a poor flow, right? And because of the poor flow. Due to the poor flow, the problems of rate holding and bridging will occur. So this, this can be asked as a MCQ that which of the following uh, tablet or the manufacturing defect will occur due to the poor flow property. So it is rate holding and bridging. Okay, rate holding means it's kind of a uh, rate, rate hole, right? Rate hole. It's a structure like rate hole. So that's why they, they giving name is a rate holding. So from inside it is hollow and around it's covered by the powder of the API. And bridging is kind of a, it will form a bridge, bridge like structure in the hopper. Okay, in the hopper because we will uh, add our uh, ingredients and excipient and API from the hopper. 
okay in the multi compressed tablet press right so it will show a problem of bridging okay due to the poor flow property bridging and rate holding okay so for that that's why we use granulation okay and to solve this problem that what will be the remedy for rate holding and bridging we first we will use a glidant what will be the uh, work of the glidant glidant do what 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 will uh, glidant do glidant do what what will do uh, glidant glide do what is the function of glidant to promote flow from the hopper yes and what is the mechanism behind it why glidant promote flow why why glidant promote flow Why glide and promote flow? How it promote flow? Reduce friction between particle. That is a work of a lubricant. That is what a difference between them. Lubricant and glide and. Lubricant will reduce friction. No doubt. It will reduce friction in the dye cavity in your tablet also. Okay. That's the work of lubricant. Glide and will reduce your angle of repose. Okay. It will reduce angle of repose because if the angle of repose is higher, then the flow property will be poor. Okay, the flow property will be poor. Yes, reduce angle of repose. Yes, and what is the formula for angle of repose? Ten theta is equal to h by r. Right? Ten theta is equal to h by r. And as you have guy told me the name of the uh, methods uh, through which we can re uh, re uh, calculate the angle of repose. We will see this in the micrometrics chapter also, but it is connecting here. So that's why I have uh, also included that part. Now, these are the various granulation technologies as we have sta in starting, we have discussed, right? So what is the uh, this three uh, in this slide? I have included all three, uh, uh, you can say, uh, manufacturing technologies for the uh, tablets, right? Before tablet, we'll prepare granules, right? And in case of direct compression, we will not prepare granules, okay? But this method is very, uh, you can say, used very less, okay? This method is not generally used. If it is used very... Uh, uh, few uh, very few products which are for which uh, the direct compression is used right because it is cannot this method is cannot be used for the large dose products large dose okay if the drug drug your drug having a large dose this method cannot be used direct compression and it also shows the stratification problem What do you mean by stratification? Or even more uh, track is a segregation if a uh, more proper word if I use. It will cause a segregation. It will cause a segregation. What is segregation? Segregation is a separation of particles according to its density so higher density particle will separate and lower density particle will separate from each other okay so that is known as segregation means that your api having a higher density and your uh, excipients having a lower density so they will separate out if you prepare it via direct compression method so these are the problems with the direct compression method remember it okay simply we just mix the api and the all the excipients Okay, and just directly compress it into the multi compress uh, rotary press that is direct compression. Okay, not suitable for large dose, and also uh, it will show stratification or segregation. Okay, segregation is a uh, separation of particle according to its density. Okay, and that's why also one problem will be uh, observed that is a, is a content uniformity problem, right. In, uh, because in case of di direct compression method, okay. Another is a con uh, one more problem is a content uniformity problem, okay. Then the dry granulation method, as we have started in starting, we have discussed the instrument which is used is a chill sonator roller compactor in case of dry granulation, 
okay and one uh, process is involved in dry granulation can you name give me a name of that process in which the large flat tablet is prepared which what is yes very good very good slugging yes yes it's a slugging so in roller compactor so we, we have combined the roller and compactor right so because of the roller first it will form a large flat tablet and that flat tablet will be break down into the small granules via the compactor okay we are here we are not using any granulating liquid okay we are not using any granulating liquid we are not using any granulating liquid right we will use granulating liquid in case of wet granulation right we are not using any granulating liquid here so that after compaction it will convert it into a small granules due to compact uh, compactor okay and then it will uh, mixed with the lubricant and then it will compressed in a tablet form okay so this dry granulation method can be used for a large dose and the most important one is for the moisture sensitive apis okay for the moisture sensitive apis this method can be used and for the large dose and also to uh, the apis which are uh, thermosensitive okay thermolabile you can say or temperature sensitive or a thermolabile for them also this dry granulation method can be used okay and then the wet granulation method okay so in case of what will be uh, there is a one order in case of wet granulation what will be that order the granules which are formed during the wet granulation it will follow a specific order right because of that granulating fluid it forms a bridges and uh, as the process move uh, towards the end the bridges will uh, start forming and the gaps between the particle will get filled by that uh, bridges and that bridges will be formed by your granulating liquid pendular funicular capillary and one more is there one more state yes you are right sakshi yes first state is pendular funicular capillary and droplet yes very good very good yes yes right yes so its first one is a pendular then it's a funicular and then capillary and droplet okay remember this is very important and wet granulation is used the most widely used you can say tablet manufacturing technique is a wet granulation technique and wet granulation for which instrument is used for the wet granulation most common instrument whatever i am speaking can be asked as a mcq which instrument which instrument used as a uh, wet granulator rapid mixer granulator yes and one more is there rapid mixer granulator you are right and one more is there that is fluidized bed granulator no 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 sigma blade no 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 it is fluidized bed granulator fbd yes that it is a dryer but this fbd uh, is uh, modified in such a way that it is can it can dry also and it also can act as a granulator okay so the more uh, prefer, preferred answer is uh, fluidized bed granulator and rmg is also most widely used granulator okay so as we have discussed this mechanism right first one is pendular then funicular then capillary and then droplet state okay so as you can see the the gaps here these gaps are getting filled okay and this is the chilsonator roller compactor okay they have written slugging operation which is for the dry granulation right and now we will start with the mcqs of this chapter 
some portion is remaining the evaluation part okay the evaluation part tablet quality control test that quality quality control test we will cover in next lecture which is to, going to be tomorrow and also then after completion of that we will start with the micromeritics chapter and rheology okay and some mcqs of the micromeritics and rheology now we'll start with the mcqs and also in this uh, in during the solving the mcq we will uh, cover some concepts okay which we can be more clear by solving the mcqs The first MCQ is the component of film coating solution to make more pileable enhanced spread over tablet bead granule is called. What will be the answer of this? Don't see the option chosen because it is a paper of someone, right? So they have cho uh, chosen the option uh, uh, four, but what will be the correct answer? Two. Read it again. Read it again. Read it again. Read it again. I am telling read it again. Read it properly, right? What is written? Film coating solution to make film more pliable. Enhance spread over tablets. And yes, it is plasticizer. Okay, plasticizer will allow the spread. Okay, <coughs> it will allow the spread of the material. Okay, film coating solution. In film coating solution, we also add plasticizer. That plasticizer will allow the spread of the solution. Okay, otherwise it will be uh, uh, only imparted on the imparted or uh, imparted on the specific part of the tablet bead in the granule uh, in the uh, during the coating in the coating pan right but because of the uh, plasticizer it will spread out okay so it will answer is plasticizer and this is from the gpet 2023 right just previous year question paper this is from the gpet 2023 Which of the following term is used to describe partial or a complete separation of top and body crown of a tablet from the main body of the tablet? These are the manufacturing defects which we will cover in uh, uh, next lecture which will be tomorrow. Right? Quality control test and the uh, manufacturing problem and its remedy. These are also very important uh, points. We will cover it in a next lecture. Capping. Yes. Yes. And what will be the lamination? What will be for lamination? What is lamination? And what is mottling? We'll cover it here also. Two layers, two or more layer separation. Yes, two or more layers, then it will be lamination. If upper and lower crown separated, then it is capping. What will be mottling and picking? Color disruption, inadequate distribution of color. Yes, mottling. And what is the uh, reason behind the mottling? What can be the reason? What can be the reason behind mottling? No, 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 no mail add reaction. No, no, no. Coating solution, no. Because of the... Because of the solvent soluble dye right color will be from the dye right color will be due to the dye when that dye is solvent soluble so during coating your solvent will get evaporated after application of your coating solution simultaneously coloring also take place so when in in current the coating solution also contain your coloring agent so simultaneously coloring will also take place so when the solvent soluble dye is used, so when evaporation of solvent take place during the drying, after coating, dye drying also simultaneously take place, right? So because of that, this dye is solvent soluble. So it will also travel with your solvent, right? On the surface of the tablet. And that's why it will show unequal distribution of the color. That is mottling, okay? And picking, what is picking? 
what is picking picking is due to the embossing and end growing on the punch right what is embossing and end growing on punch it is simply a name of a company some letters are written on the punch and because of that the surface is uneven so that punch will pick some mass from your tablet that is known as picking right so in that one mcq we have solved four mcqs and that one mcqs because everything can be asked as a mcq okay right then the next question tablet excipient whose function is to ensure formation and ejection can occur with low friction between solid and die wall and die wall yes lubricant is correct answer not the glidant as i have told that friction will be reduced by the lubricant and the glidant will promote the flow okay friction between the die wall and the your tablet will be reduced by the lubricant okay and what is the work of nd anti adhesive and which which anti adhesive we use colloidal silica right cabosil is the brand name this is used as a anti adherent anti adherent means that your tablet not stick to die wall right so it will not get stick to the die wall if it is get sticked to the die wall it will called sticking problem this is also one of the tablet manufacturing problem which is sticking okay and to solve that sticking we add the anti adhesive that is the example is colloidal silica that is brand name is cabosil okay and the binder we know what will be the function of binder this is the thing picking term is used to describe answer this one this is from also the gpet 2023 all static questions are from the gpet 2023 okay all four questions are from gpet 2023 as i have told in the starting of the lecture that almost 3 to 4 or sometimes 5 mcq come from this chapter yes yes very good yes so second option is correct as i have told that it will be pick up by the punch uh, as some embo uh, embossing or engrowing which means uh, some letter is printed on the punch okay so due to that and the last mcq for uh, today's class some more mcqs we have okay that we will solve in the yesterday's lecture uh, in the uh, sorry in the uh, tomorrow's lecture okay and then we will start with the uh, uh, micrometrics uh, portion and rheology okay uh, that chapters are very small uh, very important portion i will told from that portion definitely mcq will come from the micrometrics and rheology and you are able to solve that we will see that in the form of mcqs and somewhat theoretical part okay and the tablet uh, quality control test which are four five quality control test we will see in the form of try to see uh, uh, this kind of question answer type uh, uh, thing so that you are able to uh, you will get more and more practice and uh, the different uh, uh, the part which is remaining is the uh, different problems and remedies of the tablet manufacturing okay also coating will be covered coating problems and remedies what will be the answer for this question the last one read it properly and then answer last question for today's class given below are two statement one is labeled as assertion a and other is labeled as reason r this is also from gpet 2023 you can see the importance of this chapter okay okay this is i think fifth fifth mcq fifth or sixth mcq from the tablet chapter itself so it is very important chapter read it thoroughly each and everything you must know each and every detail okay and that's why i have told you many things or uh, see the lecture okay after it get completed 
Uh, if you have doubt, you can ask in tomorrow's lecture also, okay? Yeah, no, 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 VK, no, no, no. I know that you will may you will definitely going to get tricked. I know that this MCQ is to trick you. Yes, Vivek, Vivek, you are right. Option two is correct. Why? Because see here what is written. During process of decompression, tablet manufacturing, expansion occur in some tablet. Expansion, it means that you compress something and it will again gain, regain its shape, right? Like original shape is this one. After compression, compression is this, uh, it will get compressed. And again, after compression, it will somewhat regain its shape. So that is somewhat expansion. It means that it will again expand. Right, that is true, right? After decompression, it means compression and when punch remove from the tablet, it is decompression, right? So, it is, it, this sentence is right, assertion is right. Now, reason, explain, uh, exp expansion occur in some tablet because of the plastic deformation. No, it is because of the elastic deformation. It is because of the elastic deformation, this expansion will occur. Plastic deformation, it means that it will get break into the smaller particles. Okay, that tablet will, tablet, uh, part, uh, tablet will somewhat break. Then again, it will, after compression, it will all definitely get compressed. But it will somewhat, the particles will get deformed during the compression. That is plastic deformation. It means that particles will get smaller, more smaller due to the uh, plastic deformation. Deformation means breaking. Okay. In case of elastic deformation, they will again regain its shape. That is elastic deformation. Okay. And because of the elastic deformation, expansion occur. And here they have written plastic deformation. So the Vivek, you are also wrong because the answer will be A is true and R is false. So, this is very important MCQ. Definitely, we will see what is plastic deformation, elastic deformation and the uh, consolidation in next lecture. But this is very important. See, this kind of uh, simple uh, wordplay they will do. This concept is very well given in the uh, Lekman book. Okay, Lekman is best book for the tablet. What they have just replaced? Plastic, uh, elastic with the plastic and the entire answer will be changed as you as you, as you all guys get tricked into this question. So this, uh, this kind of, uh, you can alertness you have to uh, uh, take, okay? Be alert while reading the question, okay? Read it with the alert mind, okay? So, this is kind of uh, changes they can make and they will ask you the questions. So, the answer is A, R, A is true and R is false because elastic deformation will take place, not the uh, plastic. Any question? Any question till, uh, any question in this lecture? Otherwise, we will complete this lecture here and we will see the remaining part and its MCQ in next class, right? Because tablet chapter is, uh, itself is very uh, big, okay, very big. So, we will cover it in somewhat some the remaining part. Some part is remaining, uh, around 20-30 uh, minutes will require. So, we will cover it in next lecture, okay. Tomorrow will be also my class from the uh, 5 to 6.30, okay, 5 to 6.30. And, the, and in that class, we will cover tablet uh, por uh, ch chapter remaining part. Uh, some MCQs and then we will move towards the micromeretics and rheology portion from the physical pharmaceutics subject. Any question, anyone? Any question? You, uh, you can ask in uh, tomorrow's lecture also or if you have any question uh, at present, you can ask. Otherwise, thank you for this. Uh, thank you for joining. And uh, hope you enjoy this session because, see, very important as we have seen the how many MCQs are from the GPAT 2023 20, itself. So, very important chapter. 
and as much as i know i'm trying to give you even if it is not present in slide whatever i am speaking try to note it down okay or try to uh, 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 watch the video after completion of uh, lecture so you will got more idea so thank you for the joining any question guys otherwise you can uh, leave the session any question any question guys uh, I think Amit, there is no more questions. So uh, I think we can wind up. Okay, 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 sir. Okay, okay. Uh, thank you so much, Amit, for the class. Okay, sir.